Welcome to our Finish Line Quick Start series covering basic workflow options available to our users. We have changed the ribbon in this example to the Imagine Time Practice Management ribbon that covers all modules of our product when purchasing the practice management software. Some of our users uh, have time and billing, uh, due date workflow, uh, calendar scheduling, document management, or a combination of those options. So this ribbon menu uh, encompasses all those features rather than what you saw in the previous training session where we were focusing on the finish line ribbon. Now finish line users can add calendar and due date and actually also add the time and billing option. And if that did occur, you'd want to change your basic ribbon display to conform to this, uh, this display here. Today we're going to start with the Manage Edit Deadline screen. I've already opened it. If you're not familiar with how to find that, go to Calendar Due Dates and click Manage Edit Deadlines. And on the right side, looking at the data sheet, we can see that uh, we have about 30 items. I got that count from uh, seeing 33 in the navigation bar at the bottom left of the screen. You can scroll through those like that. And our first example of workflow has to do with the way this firm tracks 1040s. So I'm going to show task filters, choose 1040, set filter, and then hide the filters to focus just on the 1040s. Uh, with one, one minor adjustment, I want to show all the 1040s, not just the ones that are not complete. If you recall in our previous session, one of our global, global filter settings is to show uh, just the incomplete items, but I'm going to change that and override that. And you can see that we have four 1040s. Now, let's go back and review how the main task was set up in the due date uh, setup and utilities screen. That's already open, but setup utilities, due date setup and utilities is how I access it. It happens to be the third tab open right now. First thing I'm going to do is look at the master tasks and scroll up to 1040s and we're using status levels only. That workflow option comes with the basic due date monitor. You don't need the workflow add-on to track status levels only. This is a, a static tracking level mechanism. Jumping to the next tab to the left and choosing set up status levels. When you initially set up imagine time you have up to eight user described fields in this area here, plus some fixed fields that can be redescribed, but they are fixed. For instance, uh, field uh, nine, or status level nine as we refer to it, is uh, for measuring completion. And so the name of that field could be uh, work complete or finished, but it is uh, the primary way we indicate something as complete. So it, its essential meaning should not be changed. Uh, fields 10 through 14 have to do with deployment, and in this version 10, we added e-file submit and e-file approved. Your task or form is associated with a, uh, a status level tracking type, as we have here with the 1040s. Then you are limited to describing the elements of the workflow to these status levels, and that applies to any task or form that is associated with status levels. That is a limitation. It, it in fact means that you have to have tasks that have similar processes. Uh, tasks that deviate from that uh, you know, shouldn't be designated as being applied to status levels. But for our first case here, we're going to use status levels only and show what a basic due date user can accomplish. Jumping over again to the Manage Edit Deadlines, the, the tab up here. I'm keeping all the screens I'm using today open um, just for convenience and also to give you an example how it's easy to jump back and forth between your favorite screens when you have Imagine Time open. Okay, our first 1040 is Betty Boop and it has already been marked complete. Now the status levels are in this section here and when detail is not involved, okay, uh, you have the ability to mark up to eight uh, dates as complete. And these labels here come directly from the status level setup screen. Okay, work in progress and review, rework and final review. Once you get these set up, do not change them. They essentially 
uh, are applying to all the things you've already completed. So if you disabled one of them, allow use, what would happen in Imagine Time is it would give you a warning first, and then it would remove any dates from that field and basically take the information away. So it's important for you to review your status levels at the outset, make a determination of how you want to describe them and which ones do you need all eight levels or not. There's no harm in adding a status level. It, it basically uh, will change the completion percentage for items that haven't been completed. But uh, if you take away a status level, you are in fact going to remove any completion dates for that status level. Now, let's going back to the Manage Edit Deadline screen, I'm going to scroll through. The next client is uh, Ann David, uh, and she has nothing in progress here. Uh, Don Jones has two steps completed, okay? And Ralph has Work in Progress Review and Final Review. Uh, neither of the last three are complete overall. That date complete field is empty. But um, Ann David, just to show you how easy it is to complete something, uh, if it is today that you're working on this, you can just click in the field and double click and put in today's date. Uh, obviously, we're late on that. Uh, so let's just assume that this uh, particular tax return was on extension. All right. So we just completed one of the status levels. What, what uh, reporting do we get for this? I'm going to click on the due date reporting option and that's uh, basically access from the calendar due dates ribbon reporting or from the port uh, or from the reporting ribbon which also has the due date reports so and we're accessing the reporting screen now I want to ignore their completion status I want a complete inventory right now I'm going to sort this down here by name and uh, we don't have detail tracking. This is just a status level report. So I'm going to do status level report, no detail tracking. I have the ability to save these settings and come back next time and it will pre-fill in a number of the settings on this report generator. I'm going to click run report and send it to the screen. And here is an example of workflow at the main task or form level. What I mean by that is that there's there's eight fixed fields that you can describe plus completion and deployment fields. And this is giving you a gray bar that tells you how far along you are with that group of items. We're not going to go into a great deal of degree about how to use the reporting screen right now. We'll cover that in our last session. Our last section is advanced workflow, calendar notifications and reporting. And let me just mention that there are five sections. You select the type of reporting option, then you either leave this number section two blank or pick the forms and tasks you want to report on. How do you want to sort and group it? What are your filters? That's number four. And number five is how you want to output this. What type of report format you want, you get to choose from five. And do you want to export it instead of report on it? So let's just do one modification on that report. If I do uh, just not completed items. Now I'm going to see the same report that I just saw and now only the items that are incomplete are included. So those are, that is the option or the workflow option that is available to our basic due date users. Uh, running that status level report gives you some indication of progress. You can assign a date. Uh, let's jump back using this little arrow here to manage edit deadlines. You can associate a date with a fixed process, fixed in the sense that this process description applies to all tasks that are using status levels. You cannot associate a staff person with this work in progress field. The only staff associations at the main task level are uh, assigned at the very top. The primary staff person assigned is up here and the primary manager. But you can't have different staff people associated with review, rework, and final review. That's just a limitation of using the basic due date without the workflow. Okay, so now let's move to our next uh, step. And this step is available only in the workflow module. Let's take a look at uh, 1120s. Going back to our due date setup and utilities screen, and I'm going to click right in the tab there, and choosing Again, status levels, I see that there are four, just like before, no change, 
if I'm going to use status level detail, I'm still going to be associated with these fixed descriptions. Over to master tasks and forms, looking at my 1120, now there is a little difference here, okay? I've, I've got status level detail instead of status level only. That's the only basic change. The workflow model for this is hierarchical. That means one step follows another. Generally, it assumes that the previous steps need to be completed in order to finish the project. So here's the basic difference, status level detail. As an existing user of the due date software that has added the workflow module, you have the option of uh, changing from status levels only to status levels detail without addressing anything else you would have detailed subtasks that you could track for each step in that process let's let's show you how that how that uh, works out going over to the manage edit deadline screen I'm going to change my filters from 1040 to 1120 set them in high and now I still have these status levels filled in on the tracking dates tab. But I also have a, a detail subtask tracking available for each step in the process, whereas before I didn't. Uh, now you'll notice that uh, there are all the all the items or all the status levels that are in use are alliterated here, and uh, I have actually split one. Uh, this is a fairly large tax return, so both CS and DM are involved in the work in progress aspect. And I've made, made a note so the staff can see CS is doing the depreciation schedule and DM is the primary return preparer. Now our, our setup uh, in, in workflow goes beyond just marking a date complete. The individual subtask can have its own due date, own due date, right here, and that due date is usually a date that's based on a plus or minus number of days from the main return deadline. Okay, I'll, I'll cover that in more detail in just a moment. I also have a start date or an assigned date. That's also something that can computes automatically. In this case, it's 10 days prior uh, to the to the date that it's due. Uh, now your staff people in, in several places um, can mark whether it's in process or complete. Uh, we have a distributed way of handling that so your staff that are involved in this don't actually need to come to this screen in order to note that they've started it or completed it. They can use either the calendar screen or the notification screen. We'll touch on that a little bit later and in another session cover it in quite some detail. Now, on this screen, we also have the ability to track to set up budget hours. Of course, since budgets are key, I can lock that field down for certain users, just like I can prevent certain users from changing the due date assignments. And that's all covered in permissions. Let's keep going on with this. As you see down in the bottom here, I have a total budget of 17 hours. I've also recorded some time for uh, this first tax return, which you can see is Charlie's cleaning service. I'm going to jump to the time entry screen. Now, if you, if you have the time and billing module, you can record time against the budget and get a budget to actual. So we have three time entries here uh, from varying staff that have been logged in. This is the after the fact screen. There's also timers that can be used. Now, the result of this is I can click on my budget to actual screen and I can see that I have 16.5 actual hours incurred on this uh, to date. Uh, there's also a number of reports that I can use that will allow me to compare budget to actual. Now, while I'm in this screen, I could click report and copy, and I have a couple of options. One is no tracking detail, and one is with detail tracking history. I'm going to show budget to actual and detailed task notes. I have a couple of sort orders that I can choose from and click run report. Now here's where workflow becomes so valuable. This is uh, Charlie's cleaning service. I can see the primary note for the task. 
or the form in this case, and any detailed notes, missed, uh, uh, staff missed the 1099, the information came in piecemeal, so I know why there were budget delays. The, as the, down below the main task is a section for listing the subtasks with any instructions or comments regarding those and uh, an in-process and completed date, as, as well as a notation of which of these subtasks is considered primary or a key subtask. Uh, along the top, I can see the total budget to actual, 17 budget, 16 and a half actual, and down in the bottom is a summary of the budget to actual. If the return, or in this case, if this tax return had been billed, it would show the billed amount where that question mark is. So you'd have quite a lot of information useful for reviewing how the work was conducted and, and uh, how successful you were in billing it. Now this, this report covers all the filter group, so you can also see these other items. This little current status window here gives you some idea of how far along it is. Green is complete, red is partially complete, and yellow you're on the way. Okay, so that's your basic subtask report. This same report can be accessed from the due date reporting screen by going over here, choosing 1120, okay? It's in the same task year, uh, and just clicking, oops, with tracking detail, and view or run report. So that same report is accessible from the main reporting screen, and tune in for our last session for more detail about that reporting screen. Okay, so in this second example, we've covered status level details. We've also reviewed how to, just jumping back over to Charlie's, how you can mark these items as in process and complete. A number of, of filters uh, have to do with those fields on both reporting and notification screens, which you'll see later. Um, they're also uh, used as part of the uh, filter criteria in this screen as well. So for now, let's go to the final example of how you would implement workflow. And this is probably going to be the most popular. Uh, if you go back to due date setup and utilities, let's go down to monthly bookkeeping. Well, this is a, an item that doesn't really lend itself well to our basic status levels. Remember, they are uh, work in progress and review, rework and final because maybe in monthly bookkeeping there are other steps that we need to take. So we've set up some user-defined subtasks by clicking this middle choice here, and we have five that we feel apply to monthly bookkeeping. Now, obtain information, assemble, governmental filings, prepare statements, and then a review. Now these steps are one, two, three, four, five. You have to create an order there, and they're due in the main deadline month, Ideally, the, uh, it's reviewed and issued on the 20th, and the governmental filings are due on the 15th. The governmental filings are flagged as a key subtask. And we want to assign this activity at least seven days before it's due. So here are the parameters that are being used to determine when the subtask component of the overall main task or form, when that component is due, and when it should be started. And they're usually, in fact, they're always based on the main deadline of the main task or form. That is also true, by the way, when you're using the status levels with detail, those same options also apply there. In, in this particular example, instead of basing it on the main deadline month, we're saying that we want to start our tax return at least 45 days before or the subtask component of the tax return is due at least 45 days before the main deadline. We would want to start it uh, 10 days before that. Now, that may not be realistic, but that's an outside date range. You know how tax preparers end up doing so much in just the last two weeks. So, you know, you want to set up those ranges so they force an er as early a start as possible. Okay. So what are we going to do now with our monthly bookkeeping task? We've been a due date user. We've been using the status levels. Now we want to associate this task with, with this user-defined uh, group of steps that we've created right in here. And it's, it's very easy, by the way, to create a new one. If I wanted to, uh, let's just say, uh, set up some sort of new task for reviews. 
Okay, and you just type in review, um, obtain info. That's step one. I'll get into the deadline settings later. Then that's already in there, so I just typed REV um, questionnaire is step two. Okay, and as far as setting a deadline, I can say um, I want to finish this, um, you know, in the main deadline month. Uh, you know, by the 10th day. Or I can do the alternative, which is to choose not applicable under this setting and say, I want to finish this at least 10 days before the deadline for the main task. So that's an example how you would set up new uh, user-defined subtasks. Uh, when, when you're in the initial stages and, and if they haven't been applied to any main tasks, you can remove them. But once, once you have um, used these, you're, you're not able to remove uh, the user-defined tasks. One thing that you could modify is uh, the description. It, you, you could shorten it like I'm doing here, and that will automatically cascade. Now, if you change the meaning of it, that's going to be a problem because other people have completed a task that they thought meant something else. So you've got to keep the meaning the same, but you could change the description. And uh, you could see how this would uh, impact firms that have a whole lot of steps. Because if you, if you needed to describe 20 steps here, uh, you could do that. And an audit would have numerous steps. And since you have the ability to split steps, uh, that gives you, you know, the ability to let uh, several people share in that step. Again, just going back to that uh, 1120 uh, with Charlie's Cleaning Service, we split that task. Now, let's go ahead and split another one just to reinforce that. I'm going to, uh, work in progress seems the logical one. I can't duplicate, but again, I can pick CS to participate in work in progress. Just force the save on that. It's going to resort and push it to the top. And maybe uh, she started her, her end of this a little later. When you do split a task, you're going to be uh, manually calculating the dates and the start dates. Okay, I, I could also give a budget. Uh, notice here, the um, one other thing I wanted you to see was the progress completion bar. This progress completion bar is based upon, when you're using a budget, the ratio of the hours that are complete, which in this case is is 16, a, a total of 17 hours, um, as opposed to just a linear measurement of completion. Linear measurement of completion is, uh, you know, I've got uh, each step has an equal weighting. Let me mark this item as not complete by undoing it, okay? And just saying we uh, completed the third in the sequence of five total steps. And so that makes it 60% complete. So that's linear completion. You can enforce linear completion throughout the software by on the Permissions and Notifications tab uh, unchecking this box. See, this is an option to base progress bar display on budget when detail tracking and budget information is used rather than weighting each item equally. So if you uncheck that, everything will be completed in a linear uh, step-like fashion. I don't recommend that because when you've done a budget, uh, it's very useful to see that, you know, I've I've got uh, an accurate measurement of what I think is remaining on that job. Okay, so we had a slight diversion there to discuss splitting of a subtask, but back again to this example of the audit, uh, you could literally set up something with uh, 20 or 30 steps and splitting tasks and covering quite a bit of detail, all the processes necessary to complete something. All right, let's go back now to the master tasks and form tab back to this monthly bookkeeping item, which by default is status levels only, and let's associate it. Before we associate it, let's make sure there's something there. Uh, I'm going to go into Show Task Filters and the Manage Edit Deadlines, and I'm going to look for monthly bookkeeping. Don't want to look at 1120s and click Set Filters. And hide them. Now, if you have a large screen, you don't, you don't need to hide your filters. The, the training session module here is designed for 1200 by 768 or 1024 uh, by six something. 
And in that case, you want to hide the filters because you don't have enough room. But if you have a very large monitor, a 20, 24 inch monitor, you don't need to hide them. You could leave them open. But here are some monthly tasks. There's a dozen of them, monthly bookkeeping. And you can see at this point, there's no detail in here. So if you're an existing Imagine Time user and you want to convert a status level only task to a user defined subtask, follow this step. Go to due date setup in utilities, okay? Having set up your user defined subtask description, go to master tasks and forms, change from status levels to user defined subtasks. Now select your subtask description and choose your completion method. Now the help goes into some detail about what that is, but if you were doing an audit, you'd most likely use independent completion because a number of steps can be performed concurrently. But in the case of monthly bookkeeping, one step follows another. So I'm going to choose hierarchical. When I click on the record selector to save it, it tells me that I could be changing something. In this case, it's a positive thing. We want to click OK. And there was a flash of green at the bottom. And what, what just happened is the subtasks were created for all the main tasks and forms that are currently not complete. So things that are already completed aren't going to be affected. But going back to manage edit deadlines and selecting one of these client, one of these client tasks and clicking detail tracking, I can now see that all the subtasks have been created for this particular item. But I also see that I may have made an error in associating the right uh, the correct subtask type. Let's go back for a minute. And sure enough, I associated, why didn't you guys catch me? I associated the audit with, with this monthly bookkeeping. And that's not correct. So it's easy to recover. What I do is click back to status levels only. That removes everything. Okay. And now I go back to user defined subtasks. I pick the correct one and click OK. Back to our Manage Edit Deadline screen, now clicking on Detail Tracking, I see, yes, I do have the correct set of subtasks. So the importance of that little mistake is just to show you that it's fairly easy to recover from things when you're setting up. Of course, if you've enforced detailed subtasks for an item and uh, you know, you've been using it and implementing it and marking your due dates and in progress, you don't want to change it back to status levels only. That's why there are two warnings there. It's also a good reason to lock your staff out of that setup screen. There are certain rights that can prevent people, only key people from going in there. So with this monthly bookkeeping example, I'd like to show you how we can uh, cascade changes to other related subtasks or to other related main tasks for a particular client. Let's just assume that this client, uh, small auto supplies, has no governmental filing requirement. And so I'm going to click here and pressing the delete key on my keyboard, I'm going to delete this subtask. Now, if I don't have permission to delete subtasks on the permissions screen, and again, let's just touch on that quickly. Over to due date permissions, under subtasks, uh, prevent user from changing due dates, prevent user from deleting subtasks. Uh, now you're getting an idea of how these permissions come into play. But jumping back over here, I'm going to remove this permission because I have full permissions. And now it asks me, would I also like to remove governmental filings for the other related monthly bookkeeping cash records for this client and year? And I'm going to answer yes. All right, so I've created those uh, subtasks for monthly bookkeeping. I've gone back into this Manage Edit del uh, Deadline screen, and I filtered four monthly bookkeeping tasks. And now I'm going to make some changes. First, I know that the reviewer uh, shouldn't be the same person as the repairer. So I'm going to change the reviewer to Ralph Herman. Uh, it asked me if I'd like to copy that staff assignment to other task items for the same task, same client, same year. And I'm going to say yes. And what it does is it cascades those changes. So if I look at the other items in this group of items, 
you'll see that Ralph Herman is the reviewer. Let's show you how to make one other change. Uh, I want to remove uh, David Martin uh, governmental filings because this particular client uh, isn't a standard monthly bookkeeping client. There's no required uh, governmental filings. So I'm going to click on the record selector, press delete. It asks me if I want to delete this. I answer OK. And then it asks me if I'd like to delete it for the related records for this task, client, and year. And I, I am going to answer yes to that. And now if I go back to the other subtask uh, for other months, you'll see that that governmental filing is missing. Okay. Also notice that one of this group of 12 was completed when I changed the master task from status levels only to user defined subtasks. So what basically happened there is no detail was created because the item was already marked complete. That just reinforces a little bit that we already learned a few moments ago. In our next and final section, we're going to cover uh, how uh, workflow and assignments can be distributed to staff with limited responsibilities. You don't want all your staff accessing the Manage Edit Deadline screen. So we have the notification screen, which can let, let them complete a subtask and view what's do and outstanding or what the current assignments are as well as report some basic reporting there uh, for the staff uh, for those of you that have the calendar option we also have the ability to track your subtasks in the bottom uh, right section of the calendar uh, and main task as well the, there are a number of robust uh, filters that can be applied and a reporting mechanism as well as the ability to uh, change the view to a data sheet view that quickly lets the staff see the group of items that has been assigned to them. So uh, touch base on the last session for more information about using the calendar, the notification screen, and how to use the report generator. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you again soon.